Hello, it's me, it's Grudsop Monkey. How are you? How are you? Welcome back to another Letters Around the World video. This time we're finally going to South America. It's taking me until the letter L, but we're doing it. We're going. We're off to South America. Today's uh, city is the capital of Peru. It's Lima. First of all, of course, time to check out the flag. Zoom, 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 zoom in the flag. Zooming on the flag. Here is the flag of Lima. Um, as you can see, it's a very lovely bright yellow. Um, the coat of arms for Lima is being held by two black eagles. And the slogan on it, um, I can't actually read it in that language, but it translates to, this is the true side of kings, which refers to the founding of Lima as the capital of Peru after the Peruvian War of Independence. Yeah. So, Lima is the largest city in Peru, with a population of over 10 million in its metropolitan area, and is located on the west coast of Peru. Uh, its name derives from the 15th century, specifically from a famous oracle in the Lemac Valley. No, sorry, that's the Rimac Valley. It was called Lemac. Um, it means talker or speaker in the coastal Quechua language that existed before the arrival of the Spanish, um, which caused the Peruvian War of Independence later on that I've previously mentioned. In terms of tourism, the historic centre of Lima has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site. My favourite. Love a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, since 1988, some examples of colonial architecture in this area include the Cathedral of Lima, the Palace of Torre Tagle, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, and the Monastery of San Francisco. This last one has nothing to do, nothing to do with San Francisco in America. Uh, instead, it refers to San Francis. You kind of knew that already, didn't you? Of course, it's got nothing to do with the American one. That would be silly. Lima is also known as the gastronomical capital of the Americas. Oh, fancy. This is because Lima is the centre for both South American immigration and the centre of the Spanish vice royalty, meaning the chefs have been able to incorporate dishes from conquistadors and immigrants alike. Since 2011, three restaurants in Lima, Astrid y Gaston, Central and Maido, have held the coveted distinction of being considered one of the world's 50 best restaurants, and between 2015 and 2018, all three of those were in the list at the same time. Central has been in the top 10 for five years. I really want to go eat there. It sounds amazing, but also I don't think so I'll have enough monkey pennies to get there or to buy the foods. It sounds like it'd be very, very expensive. Finally, let's talk about the sport. Aside from obvious things like the football and the bullfighting because of the Spanish influences, Lima is home to seven international class golf courses at seven in one city. That's incredible. Uh, there's also the Hippodromo de Monterico, which is a horse racing stadium. It contains both a turf and a dirt track. Horse racing is very popular in Peru. Uh, they have uh, uh, four of the main races that comprise the Peruvian quadruple crown held in this stadium every year. And there's also a sport called Paleta Fronton which was invented in Lima in 1945. Um, this is a racket sport that's not that different to squash, except that you put one wall at the back instead of three round the sides, and it's usually played outdoors instead of in the back of a leisure centre. Okay, that's all I have for you about Lima. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, apologies for some of my pronunciations and things. A lot of Spanish in that uh, video, which makes things very difficult for me. I struggle with English most of the time. Um... Don't forget to do the liking and the subscribes and the stuff. I will see you next time for the letter M. You might be able to guess where we're going for M. It should be relatively obvious if you know where I live and where Mr. Dub and Mrs. Dub live. Um, that's what we're going to do for M. I will see you next time. Okay, bye.